we are going to discuss the D20MX, uh, which is part of our uh, D20 family. There are other materials on the D20 uh, family of devices from our training department. Here we are focusing on the D20MX, so we will discuss the D20MX hardware, software, cybersecurity, uh, which is an added value to the D20 family of devices, and the application of the D20MX. Toward the end of our discussion, we'll talk about how to order the D20MX either in full uh, unit or as an upgrade to your existing D20 device. Okay, so let's start with an introduction to the D20MX features. Okay, so why the D20MX? The Montelin D20MX controller collects, filters, and sorts data from a wide range of intelligent devices, remote terminal units, relays, meters in the substation. The D20MX preserves original data timestamps and uh, accurate sequence of event logs allowing data from large diverse geographic regions and time zones to be analyzed in an extreme detail data can be presented simultaneously to multiple SCADA hosts the d20mx comes with a built-in suite uh, of protocols and security uh, applications such as remote authentication dial-in service which is known as radius um, which uh, of course is based on uh, role-based access control, RBAC, uh, to facilitate the integration with various substation devices and SCADA hosts. Simplest upgrade from a D20ME to meet the substation growing requirements uh, would, uh, and regulations security would be to a D20MX. For example, some of the regulations that you might want uh, to comply to is the North NERCSIP, which stands for the North American Electric Reliability Corporation and the Critical Infrastructure Protection, um, or you need an availability of certain protocols like the Distributed Network Protocol, DMP, uh, Modbus, which is the Modicon bus, LNG, Landis and Gear, uh, or any of the IEC 6870-5 uh, protocols, for example, the IEC 6870-5-101 uh, or 6870-5-104, that's network and serial. So if you need or if you have a necessity that's growing in your substation for your existing D20 devices, for an additional uh, security regulation or uh, more processing power or a good uh, uh, collection concentration of data in the substation, the D20MX would be a great fit. Uh, we'll we'll uh, visit the application of the D20MX later in our discussion. D20MX is an embedded single board computer powered by a 667 MHz power QIECC um, uh, Pro processor which is pin to pin compatible with the existing D20 uh, processor. It's compatible with the existing D20 chassis, uh, remote I.O. peripherals and modems. Uh, previous generations of the D20 D200 RTUs required add-on add systems uh, and components and software in order to support Ethernet communication and memory expansion. The D20MX is equipped with a default integrated memory that's 10, 100, 1000 base T um, uh, Ethernet and uh, communication and it's also core loaded with a firmware that is comprehensive with a set of key substation automation uh, applications. It also has the super cap, which replaces the uh, legacy battery that required the constant maintenance at the substation. Uh, so uh, right now it, it requires way less maintenance than our legacy D20 uh, generations. In this section we're going to talk about hardware of the D20 MX. We'll discuss the main hardware and the serial expansion cards. Okay, so this is a D20MX uh, horizontal chassis. As you can see, there is uh, basically a D20MX node with an integrated Ethernet port on it. And uh, if we want to have more than seven port su support 
uh, for our substation so that we uh, need more than seven serial ports to, to communicate to serial devices. Um, there is a possibility of adding the expansion uh, card so you, for the horizontal one. You can have up to three extra expansion cards and for you will have an expansion processor with a ribbon cable going to each one of these cards and uh, that means that the total will be four, uh, four by seven uh, serial ports. Okay, so 28 serial ports are supported, one on, uh, seven on the main board, and then seven ports for each one of these serial cards, a total of 28 serial ports. Uh, this is the power supply for the horizontal chassis, and uh, there is fuses out here to uh, safeguard against uh, installation uh, uh, issues. Um, the, the, the chassis itself has a serial number and you will find the serial number on the back of the chassis. Okay, so from the back of the D20 we can see the seven serial ports for the first D20 MX. And of course if you have an expansion card for every expansion card you are going to connect an extra one of these serial cards. Uh, we can see the D20, uh, D.20 uh, LAN connector and uh, we can see the serial uh, number. In this case the serial number is uh, 500280 with a RAV16C and uh, that means that uh, this chassis is compatible with a D20 MX. In this section we're going to talk about software. Software is normally divided into two parts. There is a firmware that lives on the main processor of the D20MX and there is a configuration system that's part of your laptop that you download install on your laptop. In order to configure the D20MX once you're happy with the configuration you will download it to the main processor. Okay so let's get to the first part which is the firmware. The D20MX comes with a standard firmware which is SAN0001. That's different from previous D20 families where we had a custom firmware uh, per customer. So all our customers are getting the same uh, firmware. There is a custom firmware that's SAN0002 and the difference here is that the B09, B009 uh, which is the mailbox and the B021 which is the DMP DPA carry a different uh, version number in SAN002 which is compatible with the specific uh, setups that are legacy setups requested by um, uh, certain customers but most of our customers are using the SAN0001 which we will talk about in our firmware section. The configuration system for the D20MX is as you config. As you config comes with support for the Windows 7 64 bit and above and uh, there is uh, many uh, demonstrations of how to use as you config to configure the D20MX. Um, we'll cover it uh, further in, uh, in our uh, future uh, demonstrations. In this section, we'll discuss briefly the added value of cybersecurity to our D20MX. The D20MX comes with a role-based access uh, check for uh, either online or offline. So it will check the user uh, when the RADIUS server is online and uh, basically when the user try to access the D20MX, the D20MX will send the credentials to the server, to the radius server over an encrypted uh, communication and the radius servers will reply back if the user is a valid user, would allow him access only to the parts that he was uh, allowed access to and this would allow you for a centralized management of all your D20MXs that are deployed in the field. Um, also we have the capability of offline check where offline passwords can be encrypted and uh, updated uh, by a Vault uh, application so that's also another uh, advancement in the D20MX uh, uh, support for cybersecurity. In this section we'll discuss the applications of the D20MX in the field of substation automation. 
as you can see from the demonstration, uh, one of the main applications of the D20MX is as a data concentrator, which means that it will collect, filter, and reorder the information before it sends it either to an EMS or a DMS or any uh, SCADA uh, master. It also has the ability to do uh, uh, protocol conversion, so it can convert from one protocol to the other. So while the devices downstream are talking different protocols like Modbus, LNG, 8979, or any of the, uh, of the legacy uh, uh, communication, and maybe the SCADA master is talking only one uh, protocol like IEC 101 or DMP, the D20MX will act as a great protocol converter between those uh, uh, different protocols from downstream to upstream. And also as a local automation platform, the D20MX, uh, like the entire D20 family, has a great ability for processing power in order to uh, make calculations that's required uh, by, by your HMIs in order to present the right values to your uh, engineers and field services so it has the ability to convert data before uh, the transferring that data to uh, the, the HMIs. It also has the ability to uh, take controls based on certain schemes that has been calculated locally on the uh, D20 uh, MX. So there is a calculator application, um, a logic uh, building applications like logic links, which facilitate the, the fast, uh, easy calculation and uh, manipulation of data as a local application uh, platform. In this section, we're going to discuss the order codes of a D20MX, whether it's a new D20MX or an upgrade uh, kit from an older D20 platform to a D20MX. When ordering a D20MX, the first question is what kind of a chassis you would need. Is it the vertical or the horizontal? As we discussed, the vertical one has uh, a support for four more expansion, uh, serial expansion boards yet the horizontal has a, a capability of three uh, expansion uh, serial ports that's because of the physical limitation on the um, on the chassis itself and um, the next thing is you want to decide what firmware you want to order uh, as we told you earlier there is two types of firmware there's the san001 and the san002 um, one of the great features that is allowed is multi-partition and this is a decision that would have to be made whether we we should split the uh, applications into or make the applications live in different virtual environments uh, from a software perspective or all of the all of the applications will be on the main board if you need that capability like let's say you have um, multiple logic that have to run in one environment and another logic that has to run in another environment. If you need that capability, then that's available um, in your multi-partition and you would have to uh, order a multi-partition license for it. Uh, the last thing is uh, you have to understand the layout of your HDLC uh, network, whether you have redundant, uh, what kind of HDLC support is required and with a greater and the D20MX has a greater capability than uh, the normal D20 uh, platform. Let's say you already have a D20 and the chassis is compatible with the chassis, power supply, uh, communication card, peripherals are all compatible. Then maybe all you need to order is just an upgrade kit. If that's true, then, then uh, you need to decide on what kind of uh, D20 uh, main CPU, D20MX main CPU you need, uh, whether it is uh, Ethernet, fiber, uh, you know, back, uh, backward support of a fiber connection. And then you, you have to assess the need for the uh, serial, which of course is two parts, is the processor and the expansion card and uh, which, which if required, then you will have to uh, add as many serials based on uh, the number of serial ports that's uh, required. And uh, finally, if you need the, the licenses, again, for the multi-partition, you can order the licenses uh, 
uh, for the multi-partition multi if required. 